My name's Courtney, I work here in the florist lab, and two girls from North Bay, Lauren and Samara, brought this skull right here for me last week. Now, I'm trying to figure out what kind of skull it is. So we're missing a little bit of this skull. Instead of it being a full skull with the top and the bottom, like this skull that I have here with the top and the bottom, we only have the bottom jaw or the mandible to work with. Now, that sometimes can be a little bit challenging without the top, but I think we can figure it out. So the bottom part of the skull can tell us a lot about what type of animal it is. The first thing I really notice about this animal is its two great big canine teeth here. When an animal has big sharp canine teeth like this, I can tell it's a predator. It wants to eat other types of animals. Now the dentition or the formula of teeth that we have is very very important for telling us what kind of animal it is. This animal has four different types of teeth. If we look up closely we notice that it has these front teeth here which we call our incisors. It's got these great big canines as well just like we have. Finally it has these four teeth we call premolars and the last two which are molars. You can take your tongue and run it along the ridge of your teeth and figure out what you have and how many of each you have. The big difference between these two types of skulls is the teeth. So the skull in my, my right hand here, the beaver skull, it has very, very flat teeth that are meant for chewing and grinding down plants. This skull here has very, very sharp teeth, sharp molars, sharp canines for ripping and tearing. That means that we have a predator. So that's the first step to figuring out what this is. That dentition that I was talking about, now we're going to count those teeth. So we take only one side of the teeth and count them. So here we have three incisors, one canine, four premolars, and two molars. The four premolars are really important. There's only one group of family that has four premolars, and that's the Mustelidae family, better known to us as the weasel family. And in there, only two skulls have that type of teeth. It's the fisher and the marten. Now, if I take a measurement of this skull, which I've done already, I know that it is 67 millimeters, which is too big for a marten, but just right for a fisher. So there you have it. This skull, Samira and Lauren, is a fisher skull. Now, if we have a really close look at this skull, we'll notice some really neat features about it. I can probably take a guess on how this animal died. Right here in the skull, there are porcupine quills. That's right, porcupine quills. I don't know if you've ever tried to eat a porcupine before, but I imagine it's not that easy. We don't know a lot about fishers. They're pretty elusive. They live in old growth forests. We don't see too many around. What we do know about fishers is that they have a keen taste for porcupine meat. They've got a really great way of trying to find and attack a porcupine so that they can eat it without getting injured. First, fishers are much faster than porcupines. They can run around them in circles and tire them out very, very quickly. They also attack their face region so that the porcupines can't see where the fishers are coming from. Now, once the porcupine is sufficiently tired, the fisher will then flip it on its back where the porcupine leaves its exposed belly. Porcupines don't have any quills on their belly, so the fisher can make a nice, easy meal and get that tasty porcupine dinner it's been waiting for. This fisher over here wasn't so lucky. I think the porcupine got the best of this fisher, leaving its mark within the bones of the fisher. I imagine that trying to eat for that fisher afterwards was very difficult, as some of those quills came straight through the gum and out through the other side between its canine and incisor teeth. So that's probably how this fisher met its demise.